because she's coming. She's back in the next episode, is that? Is it the next episode? The next episode or two? Okay. Uh, yeah. No, my character left his wife because he was going to get her killed if he hung around. Uh, that once the power goes out, uh, very quickly she is injured and uh, ill, and he can't oh. help her. Uh, and then they're almost killed by uh, uh, ruffians, okay. and uh, and uh, so he makes the selfless slash selfish decision to just make himself scarce, and then it haunts him for fifteen. <laughs> Hey um, guys, how, how many selfish slash selfless decisions are ahead for you? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think selfless ever comes into uh, any any conversation that involves me. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what the reference point was for, for, the, for the remark. I'm not but, uh, <laughs> so you just waffled? <laughs> we do a lot of it. But I think that. Um, uh, I think Monroe was so enamored of his own grief, own, own um, guilt, own self-loathing, own need for love, that there is nothing but selfishness. And that kind of, that um, manifests in, in, in usually an outward expression of rage and um, all, the, all, the, all the good stuff. Is he irredeemable in your eyes? This is a question that keeps coming up, and it's and it's really interesting. It's like, uh, redemption is, is is a tricky concept because is he redeemable through action? Maybe, but is he redeemable within himself? Probably not. He's so horribly broken. So I mean, he can be led um, to that water, but he's not necessarily going to drink it. How much power does he want? When, when they get the power back, does he think he needs to be president of the United States, or does, is he finally president of the United States? No, well, this is the thing, that he's got a void in him that can't be, that can't be filled with all the power in the world. So I don't think he knows where the buck stops, like where, where, and, and that's the danger. Um, he was a man that probably never wanted it in the first place, and now that is the only thing that he perceives as um, a means to stop the inner turmoil is to, he's trying to gain control over something that he can't control. So. You, you, uh, your character is basically kind of a every man, like everybody kind of sees the world kind of through your eyes, I guess. So how did you kind of approach the character when you become, as the experiences happen, you become kind of harder and, and stronger, I guess. Yeah. So how, how did that, how did you play that? Uh, well, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, that in the first half of the season, uh, whatever involvement uh, Aaron allows himself to have in this adventure is really ultimately so that he can gather everybody together and take them back home and put things back the way they were. And then when that is uh, no longer an option and he's just left hanging there in the wind with everybody else, then he has to find a way to change the direction, change the reason that he's out there in the first place. And it becomes about finding out what happened, what caused all of this nonsense, and how to how, how to fix it. So I think more of the strength of. I was actually speaking a little more of the strength of Aaron, like especially like the episode where they're they're taken prisoner and mm -hmm. he has to stand up to these bullies. Mm -hmm. and it, it was really impressive. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I, I mean, it's it's been there are episodes coming up where I, I get to do actual stunts and actually <laughs> fight back, um, and that's uh, I think a great thing for the character, and it's a really fun thing to do as well. And and as far as you know how how you would go about preparing to do that, it hasn't really been an issue of that because it's made a, a great deal of emotional and logical sense for those things to happen and so it's been it's been a, a fairly easy progression into that. For, for either of you, did the producers have to give you at any point any information about your characters ahead of time, ahead of the reveal, just so <laughs> you knew how to play They had to, but they didn't. Sorry, <laughs> sorry my face is twitching so yeah. much. They don't, uh, I, if they have to, they are in, in violation of that. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that that is a, a, a question of, of, of circumstance. Uh, largely because I think that the show is is so big and it's so so ambitious in its reach that you know the the information is is all being crammed into a funnel and made into a show 
uh, and and th there's not a lot of lead time uh, for these things. So it's what where that might appear frustrating or strange uh, uh, to to deal with has actually sort of become a strength because it just your character wouldn't know. Why should you? You have to trust that whatever's coming down the pipe for you is not going to be uh, uh, yeah, not, yeah, not 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 create any cognitive dissonance, and, and yeah. you'll be able to, to do it. But no, we don't get told anything. <laughs> so anything. There was a clip that they showed. They showed that showed you at a computer, and it sort of looked like it might have had something to do with the castle. Can you talk about? Wow, that? you got all of that. From <laughs> You sure that's the only place you got it? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly the, the capsule. Oh, the capsule. The capsule. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a sharp eye. Yeah, no, that is exactly uh, what is coming up. That capsule uh, is not a, a one trick pony uh, in terms of, of the sort of mythology and gadgetry of the show. It's it's a, it's a pretty remarkable little thing, uh, and uh, yeah, that's exactly what. Uh, uh, and, 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 and it has something to do with Rachel being forced to finally tell Aaron what's going on or what she knows about what's going on and tell and makes forces him to realize that he may have some actual involvement in the blackout itself.